the upper side of the cowling is uh, damaged. They went and modified it and it's, it's not right. So I've laid out three new vents for the top of it. And what needs to happen is these need to be a flange. So we're gonna start this in the bead roller. As you can see, I've laid out all three of the openings. And I'm using these dies that I usually use as a, a tipping die and a backstop, but I can also use them to do uh, steps. So I've got it set up with about a quarter inch of spacing because I want about a quarter inch of flange. I'm gonna uh, set up in the bead roller and I'm gonna bead every one of these as a step first. Um, then we'll go from there and we'll tip those edges up and we'll create a nice reproduction of what the upper cowling should be like. Now we're viewing and working this from the underside, but here it is with all three of the uh, vents started. Now you'll notice we have a little bit of distortion. And what's happened is it's gathered material. It's gathered material this way because it's not very efficient at stretch. And it's also gathered it this way. Um, but as we continue with our steps, we're gonna relieve a lot of that and if anything, we may have to come back and just shrink this little section because we've gathered material. We've created a pucker of too much material right here. So we could just do a little bit of shrinking and get that back flat. But let's go in with the next steps and we'll see how it looks. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it right at that apex along that edge all the way around all three holes. And then we can continue with our tipping operation. Here we are, I've used a cut wheel to rough it out and then I came in with a set of shears and a rotary file and cleaned up all the radiuses and, and cleaned it up. So now the next step is to start to tip. And what I've done here is I've highlighted all of these straights are simply a change in form or what you could call a change in arrangement. Here where I've highlighted it with the green in all the corners, it needs a change in shape or what you would call a change in area because there's not enough material on this outside edge for that to turn up to 90. That's the limiting factor that's holding it back. Your shape always takes precedence over your form. So we're going to have to stretch those corners and then just change the uh, form of these long straight edges and the short straight edge here. And to do that, we're going to use... Uh, several different cameras. So we could come in and use a cross pin from the back side and that is going to stretch the material linearly like that. You can also do the same thing much more general, gently with this reverse curve hammer. Um, you could also, if you needed to, Use your blocking hammer right on the end and stretch it out against the dolly. Uh, for the change in form, we'll probably clamp it to a long straight edge like the table or maybe my uh, post dolly. And we'll probably use this hammer here. And uh, I'll try to set the camera up and see if we can record a little bit of that. So I'm on a stake dolly. I clamped it down and I've turned this change of uh, form. I changed it over 90. Okay. Now this is in tension. This has started to go over 90 and you can see there's just not enough material for it to go around. So I've tried a few different techniques, but I think the one that works best is to leave it clamped in the post dolly, begin to change this like we already have. And then what I'm going to use is my blocking hammer and I'm going to come in Let's see if I can do this. And I'm 
stretching that edge because this is locked. This beginning to have it tipped down is locked. This is locked because it's tipped down. So we've already started a change in its form in the bead roller. So this has got to relieve the tension between the two. So it's starting to stretch. And what I do is I'll just work that down a little bit more. Now I'll take it out. I'll start to change this a little bit more and I'll just start working it with this hammer and uh, doing a little bit on the post dolly and on the table. Uh, you can see this one is just about ready to do too. But I hope that you can notice how there's just not enough area on this edge and that's why it has to change shape. And a change of shape always takes precedence over a change in form. So let me move on to the next step and we'll see how it goes. So here at the table, what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice straight edge dolly and uh, maybe the cross pin. And if we had to stand it up, we could put the dolly right on our line that we created with the bead roller. And we could just tap and stretch that little edge right over to the dolly. And then we can clean this edge up. We can come in with the dolly like this and we can use this hammer and just clean that edge up all the way down until we get it nice and stood up on our the line that we've created with the bead roller right around there and i still have some cleaning up to do and a little bit of straightening up but it's starting to come around um, i also use one of the pegs on the table as a dolly to help radius this corner and true this corner back up after i stretched it out so i'll come in like with my square faced hammer, I'll come in here, I'll just use it to true it up. That's pretty much it. I'll uh, get the last section done and we'll take a look at it. So here we are roughed in. Um, all that's left to do is to trim this lower edge flat. And then there's still a little bit of cleanup to do. Take a file and sandpaper and a little bit of hammer and dolly work. But that's how I roughed in this upper cowl. Um, you can see our repair patch for the uh, lower part of the cowl right there. And then we have our artwork. But that should work out pretty good. Um, I'm going to put it up against the cab, find out the arc that it needs there, tip that flange up for the spot welds, and uh, we'll be good to go. I'm pretty pleased with it. Let's see from the underside. That's the flange, just like the factory did. Now, this technique can be used for like, um, let's say a center console, where you want it to radius it down, and you want it to have the pocket where you'd have the, like a lift up part, and you'd have a pocket down in there. You could use that, and then you build the bottom tray and weld along the edge of that flange, and then you could finish the weld out and not have a weld right in the corner. There's all kinds of places for this internal flange that uh, that can be used and that's the technique that I did to achieve it so I'm going to get to clean it up and move on hope you all enjoyed it